Um, I'm Maura Dollymore. I'm the Coast Guard's medical officer, the doctor for the for the Coast Guard. Um, and my my question is this to the panel because I think it's you are very unique, but yet very accomplished. Um, as we believe in diversity, one of the beliefs that we have going forward with diversity in all of our endeavors um, is that diversity brings something unique and added value to all our organizations. Um, and I thought that might be an interesting question to pose to you. Um, what, how do you see that? What, what are those unique attributes um, that, that diversity, whether it be gender diversity, ethnic diversity, religious diversity, however we want to look at it. How, how does that, what are those unique attributes from your experience um, that you all bring to your organization? Alan? Yeah, I just wrote a, a paper about this because um, one of the challenges to try to change the narrative, the dominant narrative of women can't do it is, okay, so what are women going to do for the military? Well, how are we gonna improve or increase? What are we gonna add? And this was a, a brilliant young Swedish army officer said, you guys need to stop talking about diversity and start talking about um, effectiveness, how this is going to enhance, this isn't about equal opportunity, this is about enhancing the effectiveness of your military. And he said, and there, there are a number of studies. And so I reached back to these studies and I, and I took a look at them, diversity studies. In fact, there's a, there's a whole website called Diversity Inc. And it talks about how diverse groups are better decision-making bodies. And they're better decision-making bodies because they bring a range of perspective. And, and, and it's not just, and it's interesting because there's the diversity studies, there's also collective intelligence studies. Collective intelligence studies are being uh, um, done right now at MIT. And collective intelligence studies in, were initially done in order to figure out how people co collaborate better on the web. But what they found when they ran these groups through these um, a set of diverse tasks was that groups, and it was an unexpected, they, they didn't know they were gonna see this, but groups that included more women were collectively more intelligent than groups where there were few or no women present. And so they, they don't know why, but they've done some further studies trying to figure out what it is that women bring to groups that causes the groups to be smarter, collectively smarter. And they think it has to do with two components. One has to do with communications. When there are more women in a group, communication patterns are more generally spread amongst the group. So more people, there's not one or two people dominating the, the communications within the group. The second thing is that they think that there's a component of what they call emotional intelligence in it. And that women are, seem to be better able to understand the emotional vibes or situations and respond appropriately to those in groups. And so more diverse groups are collectively more intelligent and they make better decisions overall on a wide range of decision making, policy making um, aspects. So I think those are, would be my answer to that question. I, I actually thought the Colonel worked in my office with <laughs> just her, her really great answer, because uh, those are basically all the points I was gonna cover. Be you know, and a lot of times when we talk about diversity, we talk about diversity of thought. And that's one of the things these days is we're looking at, because you can have someone, a room full of people that look the same, but if they grew up in different parts of you know, even the U.S. or the world, they went to different schools. It's that diversity of thought. And I, I want people to, to also think about diversity is not ne just necessarily when I see you and it's about race, gender, or whether you have a disability or not. You know, as we have been redefining and re-looking at what diversity means, we're also saying it's diversity and inclusion. You know, because we talk about diversity is what you bring to the table. Inclusion is how you use it. And so a lot of times when we just say the word diversity, we're really talking about diversity and inclusion because I can bring a room full of people in, but if I'm not including them, if I'm not engaging them, if I'm not taking what they say and hearing them, I'm gonna get the same result. You know, we at, at, at OPM, we have developed something we call a new, the new IQ. You talk about the old IQ is about individual intelligence. 
this is now about inclusive intelligence. This is about team intelligence, and that's a concept we're rolling out to all the agencies, and it goes to all the points that you said. So thank you. <laughs> I'd well, like to add, if I oh, may, Oh, sure, Karen. I don't know, is there anyone out here from the private sector in the audience? They couldn't get on the facility. <laughs> so, <laughs> so at some point, I'm sure, in your lives or your families, uh, you will enter the private sector. And diversity hits the bottom line. So let me just give you a different perspective. I work for a $2.5 billion company in revenue, and diversity hits the bottom line. We, if you don't have a diverse workforce, and you're not catering to your customers who are absolutely diverse in today's world, you are going to lose. So not only is it important for all the reasons these wonderful women said, but when you go to the private sector, it's important to whatever company you go to, if they're trying to make money, to their bottom line. And people that don't get it, don't get it, and it will eventually show on the bottom line. So think about that when you go to your next careers.